Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this fun summer beach scene of a girl in the sea using watercolours. And I'll be trying out a few new supplies, painting a new subject matter and experimenting with a looser style of background. So I hope you enjoy the video. As always, all the materials I'll be using will be listed below along with the reference photo from Pixabay if you want to go and check them out. So let's get started. I began by drawing the outline sketch onto my watercolour paper just using a regular HB pencil and then use masking fluid to preserve some of the white of the paper and make painting easier later on. I used a 0.7mm masking fluid pen for the tiny highlights on the top of the girl's ear, in her eye and on her floaty and then used liquid masking fluid from a pot switching over to an old bristly paintbrush to apply some looser splatters onto the sea. With that dry, I'm ready to start painting. Here you can see a couple of the new supplies I'll be trying out, which are these two watercolour paints in tubes by Daniel Smith. I have Cobalt Teal Blue and Buff Titanium, which I mentioned in last week's haul video. And if you missed that and want to go and give it a watch, I'll leave a link to it in the card above and at the end of this video. I've also put one of the paint pucks I bought in my water jar too, which if you've not heard of them are just small silicon discs which suck onto the bottom of your water container and help clean your brushes. For this painting I've started with the background and here I'm using a size 12 brush to pre-wet the paper around the girl with clean water before adding paint. For me, painting backgrounds is something I've largely tended to avoid as I'm not very confident with it and I do quite like the simplicity of a plain white background. But there are times, like with this painting, that some sort of a background is needed. So I thought I'd go for something fairly loose and uncomplicated and have fun experimenting with the wet in wet technique. So once the top part of my paper was evenly wet all over, I dropped in some ultramarine blue for the sky, letting the paint bleed out softly across the wet paper. My aim for the background to this piece was to keep it quite loose and simple, and go for a look that's a bit more stylized and painterly than I usually go for. So I kept with a larger brush and tried not to fuss with it too much. For the sea, I mixed together some cobalt teal blue, ultramarine and a bit of the buff titanium and I applied this straight onto the dry paper so I could better control where the paint was going and I softened out any hard edges with a clean damp brush. I think these three colours work really well together to create a variety of different tones for the sea and the buff titanium worked really well for adding a sandy colour to the shoreline. I also really enjoyed painting a bit more loosely and just letting the colours bleed together on the surface of the paper. I let this first layer dry completely before moving on to painting the girl and I was really excited to start painting this part as, although I've painted portraits before, I've never actually painted a whole human figure. But with her bright colourful floaties I thought this girl would be a fun first one to try. I mixed up the skin tone first using cadmium red light, yellow raw ochre and a bit of buff titanium and painted a watery mix of this colour onto the dry paper all over the girl's skin starting with the face. The paper dried quite quickly here so I was able to add in another layer of this same watery mix to the areas of the girl's skin that were in shadow before moving on to paint her arms and legs. Once 
Once the skin was dry, I mixed up a dark brown for the hair using burnt umber, indigo and a bit of mauve and I applied this onto dry paper again using the tip of my brush. I tried to match the length and direction of my brush strokes to the direction of hair growth using my reference photo as a guide. Okay, next it's time to add a real pop of colour with the yellow floaties or armbands the girl's wearing. And for this I used cadmium yellow light and mixed in some leftover transparent orange on my palette, just to liven up the yellow a bit and contrast better with the ultramarine blue in the sky. I painted this onto dry paper, applying an even wash over the whole of the floaty. Once this layer had dried, I applied a second layer in the same way, only this time I added in a bit of lemon yellow, as the first layer had dried with a bit of a peachy hue to it. I wasn't completely happy with this either, but went on to paint in some of the details on the girl's face. Painting a whole figure on this A4 sized piece of paper meant the facial features were really tiny, so to try and paint them in accurately I thought I'd try out another new art supply that I'd mentioned in last week's haul, and that's this size 2-0 round brush from Da Vinci. And as I'd hoped it was really good at keeping a nice point, which enabled me to paint the details of the girl's lips, nostrils and eyebrows as well as the details on her ear here. When it came to adding the second layer to the girl's skin though, it was back to my size 8 brush and a bit more cadmium red light and burnt umber mix. I really enjoyed painting in all the shadows on this piece and the lighting and the bright colours were part of what attracted me to it, but being that this was my first full figure portrait, the area I found most difficult was the hands and feet. Hands especially are quite tricky to get right, but being that I was going for a looser look and feel to my painting today, I tried not to overthink it and tried not to put in too much detail. I move quickly on to painting in the bright orange duck character on the girl's floaty. And for this I use transparent orange again, and I think it really helped to add a much needed boost of colour to the painting. For the character's eye, I switch back to the size 2-0 brush again and just use some concentrated black paint to fill it in. With that done, I turn my attentions to the girl's stripy bathing suit and some really concentrated indigo paint. This bit required a very steady hand as I hadn't masked out the white stripes and it was really important to make sure all the other areas were completely dry before I began painting to avoid any unwanted colour bleeds or mixing. I painted this neat indigo onto the dry paper to keep the colour really concentrated and keep control when painting in these super fine stripes. So at this point it's all looking okay, but painting in the detail on the bathing suit made me realise that I needed to make some adjustments to the values on other areas of the painting too. So here I'm going back in with a darker paint mix to add more contrast and detail to the hair. This is the same colour mix as before, with burnt umber, indigo and mauve. I also glazed over some watery burnt umber using my larger size 8 brush again, since the highlights I'd left in her hair were more light brown than white. I darkened up the shadows on her skin too using a glaze of burnt umber and some of the leftover colours on my palette. 
I continued to work on dry paper, but because the paper underneath was dry, I could still soften out any edges I didn't want using a clean damp brush. This part of the painting was a lot of fun as adding in darker values really helped the lighter areas to stand out and give the painting depth. Painting further contrast with some really dark shadows around the skin folds and around the edges of the bathing suit also added a bit more of a 3D look and feel to it overall. And even though I said I wasn't going to fuss too much over the fingers and toes, I did just add a bit more definition to them to separate them out from the rest of the skin. Next, I wanted to add some shadows to the straps and top of the bathing suit, and for this I used a very watery mix of indigo. I used the same watery indigo mix along with a bit of burnt umber to paint in some looser details to the little frill around the bottom of the bathing suit, and it was actually quite nice not to have to paint in every single detail as I normally would, but instead give a suggestion of the folds and patterns and let your eyes and imagination fill in the rest. Ok, so now I'm going to go back to the floaty and add some quinacrylate and gold hue to help build shape and form. Looking back at my reference photo I can see darker areas on the inside of the armband on the left but also some creases on the right. On the body of the floaty I'm also painting over a glaze that's made by mixing a bit of blue on my palette with a lemon yellow. It created a light green which is what I wanted in this area in shadow here. I'm also mixing in a bit of the buff titanium too. and using it to add shadows to the armbands as well. Along with a bit of quinacrylate gold. Right, there are just a few more things I want to do now before removing the masking fluid and the first thing is to add some more of that lovely cobalt teal blue to the sea as well as a bit more colour in the foreground so I can paint in the girl's reflection. Normally I would find painting the sea really hard as my tendency is to try and paint every ripple or wave and that's why I was keen to try this more relaxed and expressive type of background especially for things like sketchbook paintings or when I'm experimenting with a new subject matter or art supply like I was today. And speaking of subject matter I have to say I've really loved painting a whole person for a change rather than just a face. I mean you do lose out on being able to paint eyes and a lot of details but it was nice to try something different, colourful and fun. I do think the painting could have done with at least another layer overall but I was a bit worried that if I did that I would have been tempted to fiddle and add a lot more detail and spoil the looser look I was going for. So once this layer had dried I decided it was time to remove the masking fluid and add one last finishing touch. So here I'm using my 0.3mm Copic Black Multiliner to add some really fine details to the eyes, inside the mouth and to outline the cute character on the girl's floaty. I had a lot of fun with this painting and enjoyed trying out a few different things today. And whilst there are things that I do differently next time, like go in with bolder colour for example, I am quite happy with how it turned out. 
I'd love to know what you think though, so leave a comment below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more videos, be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload. Thank you so much for watching, take care, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.